Today, we're learning all about a person from the Christmas story, Joseph. Joseph was a very important part of the story because Joseph was Jesus's earthly father, but it didn't start that way. In fact, Joseph was very confused and worried about whether or not he should actually follow God and, and take Mary as his wife. You see, Joseph was already engaged to Mary before Mary was ever visited by an angel to be told that she was gonna have Jesus. And so one day when there, J Joseph is just going about his business, Mary shows up and says, Joseph, I was visited by an angel and I'm gonna have a baby and he's gonna be the son of God. There's a lot in that statement. Imagine if someone came to you and told you something like that. Imagine if it was someone that you love very much. Joseph was hurt, he was embarrassed, he was confused. He wasn't even sure if Mary was completely sane or if she was just crazy. How could this possibly be? But Joseph decided to follow God anyway. And it wasn't because he, but he still had to have an angel come visit him. And the same angel that had visited Mary came to Joseph. And that angel told him, hey, this is what's going to happen. You are going to, Mary is going to give birth to the son of God. She has a baby growing in her tummy right now. And here's what you need to do. You need to name him Jesus. Joseph could have said, Joseph could have said, no, nah, I'm out. But he didn't. He chose to obey God. He chose to follow the instructions that God had for him and had for his life. And Joseph, because of that, we're talking about him 2,000 years later. God blessed him richly. You see, Joseph obeyed when it didn't make sense. There are some times when God asks us to do things that doesn't make sense. We're like, how is that true? How is that possible? Why would I do that? That doesn't make any sense at all. But if we follow God, we'll find incredible things at it. So let me show you a little bit what I'm talking about. I'm gonna give you some instructions and I want you to go ahead and stand up. Go ahead and we're, I'm gonna give you these instructions and they don't always have to make sense, but I want you to do them anyway. Are you ready? Here's the first thing I'd like you to do. I want you to do 10 jumping jacks. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, Whew. good job. Did you get them all done? Take a breath, Whew. grab a breath. Okay, here's the next one. I want you to say as loud as possible, I am a wacky, wacky bird. <laughs> You're a wacky, wacky bird, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, anyway, okay, so here's the, here's the last one. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to turn around five times while shouting Christmas is all, almost here, Christmas is almost here. Ready? Five times, turn around, here we go. One, two, three, go. Christmas is almost here. 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 Whoa, don't fall out. Don't, careful. Okay, you good? All right, catch your breath. Now, did those instructions make any sense? No, they didn't make sense. And sometimes the instructions we get from God don't make sense. But when we follow God's instructions, we always get a blessing. Now, imagine if you did all those that you actually get someone comes and says, hey, you did a good job. Here's five bucks. Sweet, five bucks, this is amazing. I love $5, $5 is, is awesome. I can go get something at, the, at McDonald's now. Now, that's pretty awesome because God always bless, blesses us when we follow him. But the other thing is, is that when we follow God, sometimes it costs us something. See, Joseph, when he obeyed God, it cost him something. It cost his reputation. You see, Joseph was a fine, upstanding man in his community, but when Mary shows up pregnant and they're not married yet, ooh, most of the town looked down on that and they, or, and they were questioning about how did this happen? Why would this happen? Joseph probably came down, uh, he became ridiculed and made fun of in his entire town. And that was actually one of the reasons why he was considering divorcing Mary in, uh, in quiet, breaking off the engagement in quietly so that no one would actually know what had happened. But people knew and they all people knew and it cost Joseph something. So now you still remember that five dollars that you imaginary got. Now, here's here's what I want you to do. I want you to take that five dollars. I want you to go put it in the in a box. Imagine you're going to walk, put it, walk, walk over to a box and put it inside. And that five dollars is going to be gone forever. You ready? Do you even want to do that? Well, let's imagine that you are and you're walking over to the box and you take your $5 and you go to put it down 
And then you look inside the box and you think it could be something good, it could be something bad, you're not sure. And you look down and then something wonderful is inside. It's not $5, it's $100 and it's all yours. Isn't that awesome? You see, when God asks us to do something that costs something, sometimes he pays it back tenfold, a hundredfold, 10 times, a hundred times. God will always, God blesses us when we follow his instructions, even when they don't make sense. When I obey, God will bless me. Now, does that mean that your life is gonna be perfect and everything's gonna be rainbows and daisies the rest of your life? No, of course not. But what it does mean is that if you follow God, He will bless you. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but when you look back in your life, you know that God has blessed you greatly because of the things you have, because of the things He's done, because of the opportunities that have been placed in front of you. All we have to do is trust and obey God. Now, here's what we're gonna do is we're gonna pray but we're going to do something a little different. In weeks past, what we've done is we've normally sang a song at the end. And I know we sang a song earlier, but what we're going to do this time is I'm actually just going to play some music softly in the background and, and put a graphic up on the screen. And what I want you to do during this time is I want you to just bow your heads and close your eyes and listen. Listen for what God may be asking you to do. One of the things that we learn from following God is how to hear his voice. It's not an audible voice. It's, it's not like when our parents are talking to us, but it, it's sometimes we would just, just know and we can hear it. We can hear what God is telling us to do. It may be an urging. It's like, ah, oh, maybe I should go do this. Or maybe it's a thought. And like, what if I did that? And if we listen to those things and as we continue to listen and act upon it, we can get better and better at hearing what God's voice is. Maybe it's something you read in your Bible about taking care of the poor or taking care of widows and orphans, or maybe it's something you hear someone else in prayer and it's like, I wish, uh, I wish God would do this and you have the ability. Or, or maybe, maybe you hear about a need that you can step up and say, hey, I can help you with that. All of those ways are ways that we can hear God's voice, but we have to practice. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray at first and then I'm going to be quiet for one minute. And I want you to pray and listen for God to speak to you and ask him, what are you asking me to do? Let's pray. God, I thank you that you speak and we can hear you. And even though some of us have never heard your voice before, we're not even sure what it sounds like. God, I pray that you speak to every one of us today. Everyone who's watching this right now, that you speak to us and we're able to hear you. God, I pray that we all develop the skill of hearing your voice. And God, I pray that we trust to obey, we trust and obey you no matter what. God, thank you so much that you are speaking to us all the time and all we have to do is listen. I pray as we listen right now that you speak to us. Let's listen for the Lord. <laughs> 